All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to install Reshade 4, specifically in this case, The Sims 4, but this methodology should work for basically any game that you want to install it for. So if you're not familiar with Reshade, Reshade's like a graphical enhancement program that you install over top of a game or a piece of software. And it can do things like add more sharpness, crispness, uh, filters, kind of like what you'd have in Instagram when you post a picture, that sort of thing. It's fancy. It can add a lot of cool features and make your stuff look prettier, especially if you do things like you're a builder or you like to record gameplay. It does a lot of the work up front, so you don't have to edit it as much later and add effects at like the post editing, all that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to download this. It's available on reshade.me. And when I click on download, it's going to shoot me to the bottom of the page where it has two versions just to make sure it's super compatible with everything we want to do. I'm going to be downloading reshade with add on support. The main difference is that regular reshade doesn't have as much support for secondary stuff, uh, but it won't also trigger a lot of anti cheat stuff that might get you banned from multiplayer games. I would generally not recommend installing reshade for multiplayer games where you might get banned, especially because anti like cheat technology is pretty touchy. So just be careful with that. But for our purposes, we want the reshade with full add on support It'll even warn you that this is meant for single player games and could get you banned. So just be careful. We'll say, okay. And then I'm just going to install that into my downloads folder. So once I go get that downloaded, I have it here in my downloads folder. I already downloaded and was playing around with it earlier, but we want to just double click on reshade. And it'll also once again, warn us that the add on version is meant for single player games only, but we'll click OK. And now we just have to find it. And then you just have to find it inside of your list of different games in order to select it and then download it. I'm really not sure what half of this stuff is, but I know that Sims 4 is not in this list right now. We're going to have to go find it, and it really just going to depend on how you have this installed on your computer. So if you have it installed on EA, all you have to do is, let's say you've got it in your sidebar installed, just click on it in the EA Play app, and then go down here into Manage, and then View Properties. And this will tell you exactly where it's installed in your computer. Go ahead and click on browse. And then inside of here, it's in the game folder in the bin folder. And this application TS4 64 bit is what you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this file path up here. I'm going to minimize this, close all this, and we're going to browse for it. So once you're browse window pops up here. We're going to go back up to the top of our file browser. We're going to paste in that directory path to where our game is installed, hit enter, and then we're going to click on the Sims right here and click open. And then it should prompt you for administrator permission. Go ahead and say yes. And then Sims 4 runs off of DirectX 9. If you're installing this for another game, because this tutorial should work for basically any game. Um, if you're installing it for whatever game you use, just Google what it runs on, and then it should be able to tell you. In my case, I know Sims 4 runs off of DirectX 9, so we'll just click DirectX 9 and click Next. And then uh, if you've got a preset that you want to install alongside of this, we can do that now. I prefer to install things like presets after the fact. It's a little less messy, so we're just going to skip this process. And then from here you can select all of the different presets that come with reshade that you want to install along with it. Just download all of them. There's no reason you can't play with all of them, to be honest with you. Uh, they'll all run okay. I think when I was running this earlier in The Sims 4, some of these didn't uh, compile, which is just a nice way of saying they're disabled because for whatever reason, the current edition of Sims 4 is breaking them. So rather than bork your computer up or bork your game up, they just disable them. It's really nice. So then we'll hit next. And what it's going to do now is it's going to go through and it's going to be like, oh, what all the things do you want to install from these different packs you selected? And I'll just say all of the things. I'm just going to hit next. 
You can selectively remove certain features from some of these packs if you know for a fact that you don't want them, but I mean, at that point, you might as well just not install the pack and find a different preset pack that you do like on the web. Uh, where do you get preset packages? They're available everywhere, especially when you're a member of the Sims 4 community. There is a lot of creators out there who like to share their favorite presets that they've made, that they've reshared, uh, that they prefer. They'll even give you links to people who make them for other games that just happen to be really nice and work really well for The Sims. Installing these presets is as easy as dragging and dropping them into the appropriate file. I will do a secondary tutorial on how to do that after I have done the ones for how to install it and also how to remove it. Removing it is the exact same way. You run this installer, you point it at the thing you want to install it in, and you say, uninstall that, please. And then it'll go through, it'll remove everything, and then you'll be hunky-dory good to go. Worst case scenario, if you do want to uninstall this software and it's misbehaving, you might have to uninstall The Sims 4, which would suck, uh, not only because it takes a while to download it, but also because it takes a while to remod it if you need to re-add your favorite mods. So just keep that in mind before using Reshade. For creators out there, um, you can recreate a lot of the effects in Reshade in your editor, either through Photoshop for photos or through like your editor of choice. Sometimes you might need an extra plugin. So you have a lot of different choices. So once it's down, done downloading all of the different uh, presets that it wants and all that jazz, it's going to say done and we can hit finish. And then the next thing we can do is I can actually boot the Sims. So let me do that real quick. Okay. This might be a little laggy. Uh, in the preview, but the first thing you'll see popping up when you run The Sims now is at the top it says Reshade version 5.9.1 is loaded. You have had a few minor hiccups when uh, it was processing and like booting up. So if I hit the home, oh, that's loud. If I hit the home button, it'll tell me what didn't compile. Two things didn't compile. Depth of field blur effects didn't compile and the depth of field height fog didn't compile. That's the same thing that didn't compile for me before. And out of all of these presets and different shader effects that downloaded with it, one of the one or two of them not loading is completely fine. These just won't be usable. It won't harm our game at all. Just so you're aware. So I put together, let me let me exit this by hitting home button. So I randomed in a random character and we can kind of take a look at what these different presets look like. To access your presets, I hit the home button and inside of here, if you have presets, you might be able to find them in a, you know, reshade preset section and then you can click on them and they, they got their settings already set up, but you can enable different filters. Let's call them filters. You can add like a comic effect where they've got like a cell shading thing going on. And then inside of that, you have different settings that you can tweak. You can make, you can make these bigger or smaller. And you can add more cell shading, less cell shading. It's a lot of sliders and some fancy tweaking, but it's a lot like working with different adjustment layers in something like Photoshop or Premiere Pro. It's just enable a feature, enable a filter, play around with it to see if you want to layer it together with another one. And then you can put some of these together when recording and then layer them to create a fancier effect. You can combine a light color changing effect with some curves layers to make it look darker, to make like a nice elegant sunset. You can make it look sharper. You can add a cell shading effect to make it look more cartoony. You can add a vignette, which is just this gradient on the edges of my monitor right now. All of these things are available to you, and this should work built in with your recorder, with your streaming software, so it shouldn't be too, too laggy. But if you find this is lagging out your system when you're trying to do stuff, you might just end up having to turn it off when you try to stream or record, which is fine. That happens to the best of us, no matter how good your computer is, because some of these effects in some of the games you can put this on add some craziness to it. So that's really the gist of what Reshade is and what it does. You can layer effects together to make your own presets. I'm not gonna get into the more uh, like advanced stuff with that today, I might later, but I hope you enjoy. It's a pretty quick and easy process. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your host, Larry. The next video, I'll show you how to remove this in the event that you have buyer's remorse or you just like, I need to remove it to fix some mods and figure out what's going on. So for whatever reason, I'll show you how to remove it later. I thus far though, when I've played with this in the past in different games, haven't had a lot of problems. So bye everybody, have a good one. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of the pertinent links will be thrown into the video description below. Bye everybody and have a good one.